All right, guys, welcome back. Another episode. Here we go. Terrible teaching by your terrible teacher. That's me. Here we go. Um, today, we're going to be talking about equation word problems. And um, most importantly in that is defining the variable of an equation. Okay, so in that, this is all about I step and getting your NWEA score as high as possible. So your objective for this video is as a student, you should be able to define the variable of an equation. We're moving on. You're going to actually need worksheet number 12. You'll get that and start using it in a few minutes. We're going to do a couple examples beforehand, and then I'm going to give you a free couple answers on that. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and get worksheet number 12 at this time. All right, just to give you a heads up, you might want to find this graphic organizer if you still have it. If you don't, you want to have this chart somewhere. You should have done this about three or four times now. These words are all very important for you. You need to remember that this is some important vocabulary that's going to help you with writing equations. All right, so here's our goal. Our goal is to be able to do problems like we see here. Number one, it says Anna has the six newest music CDs, which is twice the amount that Bob has. How many does Bob have? And you'll notice that we need to define the variable. That's the same thing that we have done when we did expressions in the last unit. But we also need to write the equation, and then we need to solve it. So we're doing basically the same thing, only this is a little bit different, because remember, an equation has an equal sign. And remember, any time that you're writing an equation, you should have some sort of variable. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, it says, Anne has six newest music CDs. So we know that Anne has six, all right, which is twice the amount. Twice means multiply. What are you going to multiply? Well, you're, you're multiplying the amount that Bob has. Do we know how many Bob has? No, we don't. So Bob's amount is what is actually the unknown. And because that's the unknown, we're going to use that as the variable. All right, so Anne has the six newest music CDs, which is twice the amount that Bob has. So in order to create an equation from that, what you would do is you would say twice the amount that Bob has is equal to six. All right, and that is really your equation, and I put that in the wrong spot, but twice the amount that Bob has is equal to six. And remember, why did I use B as my variable? Well, because I don't know the amount that Bob has. And remember, I had to be very specific to get this particular point on my I step, okay? Remember, a lot of times this is worth two. So how do you get these two points on your variable? Well, you have to be very specific. Remember, B is equal to the amount, and I'm using a lot of the words just from that sentence, but the amount of what? The amount of music CDs that Bob has. And I'm going to write it down here. And Bob should be capitalized because it's a name. You know, Mrs. Turner might be mad at me if I don't do that. So there you go. What is B? Well, B is the amount of music CDs that Bob has. Now, my equation, once again, two times the amount that Bob have is equal to how many Anna has. Okay? Because remember, Anna has twice as much. So twice as much, she has twice as much as Bob, which we could probably figure out in our head. However, the whole problem is worth six points. So on I step, you should be able to get these six points without any problems. So what we need to do is we need to solve. And it says, show all work. All right, so in order to show all the work, you got to do very simply, put the equation back up. All right, go ahead and how do you solve an equation? Well, it's very simple. Draw your line, identify which side your variable is on, okay, which happens to be right there. How do we get rid of a multiplying by b? Well, you divide by 2 from both sides, and you will get b equals 3. How many CDs does Bob have? Bob has three CDs. All right. And that's it. And that's I'm going to get a lot of points for this problem. So let's move on. We're going to do example number 2. All right. Janine, who bought $15 worth of makeup, spent $6 less than Leah spent. How much did Leah spend? All right, so the first thing is, what do I not know? What's the unknown thing? Because I need to figure out what my variable is. Well, I don't know how much money Leah spent. 
So I need to create a variable for that. I could use x, I can use l. I'm not going to use l because it looks like a 1, so I'm just going to use x. So x is equal to the amount of money Leah spent. And what did she spend it on? So I want to be specific on makeup. Okay? And that's my that's defining my variable. Now let's make an equation. So let's go back up. So we know Janine bought $15. So we know that she is Janine is equal to 15. Alright? But Janine spent six dollars less than Leah. So six dollars we know we need, and less than is subtraction, but it's ooh, right there. Right? That's a star. So we got to be careful. How much did Leah spend? Well, we don't know, right? So $6 less than Leah. So we have to make sure that Leah comes first. And remember, for Leah, I'm going to use x. So I'm going to have x minus 6, OK, equals 15. Because we've got to be very careful. Janine, she spent 15 bucks, but that's $6 less than Leah. So right here shows $6 less than Leah is going to give me that 15 bucks. Now, what do I need to do? Well, I need to solve it. So here we go. X minus 6 equals 15. I need to draw my line, identify which side my variable is, look at the stuff attached to it, do the opposite of minus 6, inverse operations, add 6. 15 plus 6 equals 21. 21 is the amount of money Leah spent. So Leah spent... $21 on CDs. There you go. All right. Example number three. This is number one on your worksheet. Here we go. Free answer. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Here we go. How many ink cartridges can you buy with $252 if one cartridge costs $18? So we know we have $252. That's how much total we're going to spend. So if that's going to be the total, I generally say it's equal to that total amount. And each one costs 18, but it wants to know how many ink cartridges can I buy. So what is unknown? Well, unknown is how many can I buy. So how many cartridges? So C is the thing that's unknown. How many cartridges? So I'm going to use C. C is equal to the number of cartridges I can buy. And I'm going to say with $252. Okay, so this is the number of cartridges I can buy with $252. So if I'm going to say my equation this time, I know it's going to equal to 252 bucks. And I know that each cartridge is 18. How many can I buy? Well, how many 18s are in 52? I need to figure that out by saying 18 times how much or how many cartridges is going to give me $252. You also could have used the following, and it would have been completely acceptable. $252 divided by 18 equals the number of cartridges. That would have been okay as well. Either way, you can use both of them. I'm going to be honest with you, though. The one up here that I have my arrow next to is the one that iStep would prefer and gives you a bonus point for. Okay? You don't need that point, but it is definitely nice to have. So... We need to go ahead and solve it because it says what is the number of cartridges that can be purchased. Okay, equals 252. Draw my line. Do the opposite operation of multiplying by 18, which is dividing by 18. And you're going to get C equals 14 cartridges. 14. And see how it puts the answer down here already? You just need to write it in there. 14 cartridges. That is example number one, or sorry, question number one on your worksheet. Last one. Want to move on. Here we go. 14, number four, or sorry, example number four, this is number two on your worksheet. Melanie's High School played 14 soccer games this year. The team won most of them. Well, congratulations to them. They must be decent. They were defeated during four games. How many games did they win? All right, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, they played 14 games, and they lost four. So if you lost four, you have 14 games, you lost four, you want to know how many they win, they won, that should give you your wins. Okay? That's one way to figure that out. There's another way you can write it, and I'll do that one in a second. But what does that W stand for? Well, the W stands for how many games, I want to be specific, 
Remember, the more specific, the better chance you get at your score. How many games Melanie's team won? Okay, not bad. Now, this equation is not terrible. It's very, very easy, because, but you do have to show some work, which makes it a little weird, right? Because you're going to have to show some work in there. Um, a better equation would be to mix it up so that your W is not on one side of the equal sign. It should be mixed up with the other stuff, okay? So how do I do that? Well, another way to look at it, and you don't have to, but another way to look at it is that you know that you have lost four games, and four games plus the total number of wins you had is equal to how many games you played, and we played 14 games. So you could use either one. Now, you need to show your work. So you could either go down here and show your work for the first one, or we could use the second one, which is what I'm gonna do, all right? First thing you need to do, draw your line, okay? We're adding four, instead of an adding four, we're gonna subtract four from both sides, 14 minus four, and that gives you wins equals 10. So how many wins did they have? 10 games won. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where you're at. The rest of the video is done. Worksheet, you need to complete those four and check them. You're probably gonna need some help on this worksheet, that's fine, come see me. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day.